Hi everyone and welcome to this new video. My name is Susanne and today I want to show you how I paint with fountain pen inks in my bullet journal. And these are the inks I'm going to use today. These are from Ferris Wheel Press and these are from the newest release from the Finer Things collection. And the colors are Spruced County Post, Steeped Amber and Oyster Hour. I will also uh, write them down in the description below this video, so you can also check them out later if you want. And I'm going to use watercolor brush and I also have a little cup with water next to me. And I'm going to start with the color Oyster Hour. And what I do, I just dip the brush in the ink and I just start painting like this with it. And I didn't wet the brush before, I just use a dry brush and also I use dry paper for the ones who are familiar with watercoloring. You also have the option to wet your paper beforehand, but I didn't do that. I just used it just on dry paper. And what you see is that you immediately see some shading from the ink. If you just go once over the page with your ink, it's light. And as soon as you go over it again, it gets darker. And that's the way how I like to play with the fountain pen inks with doing this. I just like to go over some parts to make it darker. And you can make really nice uh, splashes also. And that's what I really, really like with painting with fountain pen inks. Because fountain pen inks have some special properties. Um, they are called shading, sheen and shimmer and this, these fountain pen inks that I'm using right now they have some shading and also some sheen and yeah for the ones who don't know what it is the shading is yeah that you see like differences in color like uh, where the ink pulls up it gets darker and uh, where it doesn't pull up it's lighter you also see it happening right now while I'm painting this. Uh, when I go over it again with my brush with some more ink, it gets darker and the parts that I touch this once, it uh, stays lighter and that's called shading. And what I'm doing right now, uh, I add some water and yeah, the effect with that is that you get like really nice uh, splashes and uh, borders and edges and it looks really really playful. R right now it's still a bit like uh, shiny from the wetness, but later on you will see how it turns out. And now I start with my second leaf and here you see the shading. On the right side you see it gets darker and um, yeah, it's all the same color of ink, but you see just the color differences. This shading property is actually also the reason why I fell in love with writing with fountain pen inks. I remember I once saw a picture of somebody who wrote the text with uh, Jacques Herbin ink and I just instantly fell in love with it. I thought it was so beautiful. Um, yeah, you saw like the upper part of the letters, they were lighter and where you end writing the letter it is darker and yeah, I thought it just looked so beautiful. Maybe if you don't know what I mean uh, while I'm telling this, maybe you can look up some pictures on Instagram uh, about people who write with fountain pen inks and then you uh, yeah, probably understand what I'm trying to explain right here. You actually also saw it happening in the middle leaf. You see some lighter parts and darker parts and yeah, that's just the shading and that's what I like to play with while painting with fountain pen inks. And you can make the effect a bit more dramatic with adding some water to it. So yeah, it gets like more diluted and the, all the colors that the ink is built up from, it just shows uh, everything. And now I go to the next color. This is the steeped amber. And you immediately see it's a lot darker. And I just use the same brush. I just rinse it with water. I dry the brush with yeah, an uh, old towel. And yeah, then I just continue painting. In Instagram I also got a few questions about how I clean my brushes and which kind of brushes I use. I got these brushes from my mother. I have no idea which brand it is, but yeah, it are just watercolor brushes. So I think any watercolor brush will do. And I just clean it with water. In my experience, um, yeah, it works quite fine. I just uh, keep the water running over it until it turns uh, clean. 
and you can also use a little bit of soap a bit soft soap to clean it and you just should be really careful because the hairs of the brush are shaped into a really fine point and you really don't want them to get spread out or get harmed so when you clean your brush you should be really careful uh, doing that and back to the painting I just went to the third leaf with steeped umber and as you see I first draw the outline and then I fill in the whole white part just to fill up the color and then I go over and over it again at some parts to create some depth in it uh, where I want it darker I just uh, make it darker with going over it again and autumn leaves always have some spots and I create this with going over it with a little bit of ink again and also with adding some water so it, yeah, it looks really a bit like spotty and messy which I think is the perfect vibe for autumn leaves. You can, if you want, also create a more clean look with painting with fountain pen inks, but in this case, I don't want that. I want it spotty and messy. But if you look at my Instagram, I also made once a painting uh, with green leaves and there it looks more like watercolorish. It's like less spotty than this ones. So if you want to achieve that, you can also do that with fountain pen inks. And now I went back to the first leaf because I found it a bit too less spotty. So I add some little bit of more ink uh, here and there and I hope it gets a bit more spotty like that. And now I go in with my little towel and dry up some parts which are still wet. I do that to prevent the ink from bleeding through the paper. I'm using here my MD notebook uh, from Midori, which has also fountain pen, friend, fountain pen ink friendly paper. <laughs> it's a hard word. And my experience is that uh, it holds the ink very well, but I don't want to test it too far and ruin the other side of the paper where I already made a spread. So I just decide to dry some parts up a bit. Um, yeah, to prevent it from bleeding through. And I now went to my last color. This is Spruced County Post. And I hope you get a bit of idea of how I paint those leaves. And yeah, that is actually not that hard. I consider myself really like beginnerish. I don't have a lot of experience with watercoloring. Also not really a lot with yeah painting with fountain pen inks. I just decided to try it out <laughs> as I do uh, with a lot of stuff. I just try out stuff in my journal. Sometimes it goes fine, sometimes it's a disaster. But in this uh, case, I am really uh, happy with how it turned out. And what you do is you just fill in the white and then you just go over uh, some parts where you want some splotches and uh, some even unevenness. And that's how you create this effect. And you can just let the ink do the work. That's the nice part about painting with fountain pen inks. You can just yeah, let the ink do the work. And that leads us back to the properties of the ink uh, about uh, which I was explaining in the beginning of this video. I explained already about the shading, but I also mentioned the shimmer and the sheen. The ink that I'm using today doesn't contain any shimmer, uh, some other inks do and the shimmer is nothing else than that it has some little glitters in it, super fine little glitters so when you move the paper around it really gives some shiny glittery look, it's really beautiful especially uh, I think around Christmas and in the holidays and yeah it's, uh, it's really nice to use sometimes. And the sheen is a property uh, that occurs when the ink is not absorbed into the paper very quickly and has time to dry on the surface. And as this happens, the yeah, ink in the rim will appear like a different color. You mostly see it when the ink dries up. Uh, you actually only see it when the ink dries up and you turn the pages a bit in the light. It looks a bit like metallic-ish, but it's not really metallic. 
um, yeah, it's just like a different color that shows up when you move the paper around a bit or look very closely. In case of the green ink that I'm using today, the sheen is a bit reddish purplish. Um, yeah, so you can see some little red purple lines uh, around the edges where the ink dried up. I personally think it's really a cool feature that sheen in fountain pen inks and I really love it. And right now I'm showing you my glass dip pen. This one is from Jacques Herbin. Uh, and I'm going to use this pen to draw some lines on the leaves to make it look more realistic. And first I go next to the edges to give some more shade to the line, like where the shadow is. Um, I create some darker spots so it yeah, looks a bit more in depth and more like a real leaf with some curled up edges because um, that is the effect I want to achieve today. And you see me drawing some ink around uh, the places where the shadow needs to come and I uh, blend it a bit more in with my watercolor brush. The brush is a bit damp, it's not wet. I just, yeah, just love to blend it in so it's not really a harsh line I'm going to create. And I also go over a bit the outer edges of the leaves a bit. So it gives more like a defined edge. And I'm using just the same color as what I painted the leaf with. So in this case I also use Oyster Hour. And now it's time to draw the veins of the leaf. And you see, it's really quite easy to achieve this effect. I just yeah, draw some lines, I just yeah, look to the real veins, like hold how the pattern is and yeah, that I just recreate. And now it's turning into a real leaf. <laughs> and I do the same for the other leaves. I refine the outer edges, I make it a bit more crisp, I add some shadows and then I draw the veins. And you see me using a glass dip pen. You can actually use any kind of pen. You can also use like a regular dip pen or a fountain pen if you have the ink inside which you want to use. What I personally like about the glass dip pen is that it holds quite a lot of ink so you can write long with it or draw long with it. Um, I think you can even write a whole page with just one dip. Um, and what I also like is it's easy to clean. You can just hold it in the water or rinse it with water and dry it with a towel and you're ready to use your next color. And yeah, it doesn't have like funny edges where the ink can stay. So yeah, you just mix up your inks. In that way I find it really nice to use this glass dip pen. And also it looks so nice, I think. It looks like uh, so old school or a bit more uh, like from old times. I really love it. Honestly, in the beginning I also needed to get a bit used to the feeling. It really gives a bit like scratchy feeling when you write or draw with a glass pen. It just feels different than writing with metal, obviously. Um, but yeah, if you use it for a while, you also get used to. I will also link, by the way, all the tools that I use in the description below. Except for my brushes, I really don't know what brand it is. But all the other tools I will link or I write down the brands. And now I went to the last color, the green leaves. I think the greens really turn out the most beautiful. As you can see with the inks also, uh, it has some different colors in it. Like in the green you see some bit brownish, light green, dark green. It has that uh, red purplish sheen also. I'm just really in love with it. But uh, <laughs> you might have uh, noticed my uh, enthusiasm uh, about these inks already. I think this set is also really beautiful 
together. It's really, I love the autumn colors, like the light brown, the dark reddish brown and the green together. And now I finished the leaves and I decided to add some little distress oxide in the light color. I used pumice stone to color a little bit between the leaves because I found the contrast between the paper and the leaves and the, yeah, the space that was between a bit too light. So I decided to give it a little color like this. But I don't want it to end up too dark because I still want the leaves to stand out. And I also wanted to create some little spots and for that I'm going to use this stamp from Stampers Anonymous and I used the color Vintage Photo and I just randomly apply uh, some ink here and there so it gives a little bit of a more coherent feeling I think like this and yeah now the left page has some leaves but the right page is like completely white and I decided to give a little tiny collage on the right side I have these girl stickers from Cafe Analog and I chose this little girl with the umbrella because it's like raining a lot right now in the Netherlands and as I told you last week, we are uh, having a huge renovation now at our house. And for that, I'm using this chair to have a, like a little hint to the renovation. And I'm going to do it with some embossing. And sometimes I get like comments under my photos in Instagram from people saying like, oh yeah, I should do some uh, embossing too. I really like it, but yeah, it also takes a bit time. I uh, timed it and it took me like two minutes to make this image and cut it. So it's really like time is no excuse to use gold embossing. <laughs> just do it. It just really takes two minutes to create this image, including cutting. So for the ones who are still in doubt, just get your tools and just do it. And I also cut out the white edges from the girl sticker. And I have this label and I always like with this label to cut out all the white edges and have only the border. And this washi tape is from Loy Designs. I really like it because it has like also that autumn colors and I also cut out some branches from this one and also stick it to the page. So a little teeny tiny autumn collage on the right page. And of course a little house sticker. This is from Black Milk Project. And I like to use this one as a hint to the renovation that's going on at our house right now. Right now the house is all empty and they are now like building up. It's all very exciting, also very tiring and uh, yeah, quite time consuming I must say. But yeah, it's really turning out so beautiful already. So uh, I'm happy we started, but it's also intense in the same time. And I'm closing off this page with adding the dates. I uh, use the Spencerian penmanship alphabet. And I always like to first uh, write it with pencil so I can still make mistakes or I can decide where I want the letters to come and still can correct myself. And then I write it over with fountain pen ink. And for the writing I used the spruced county post color that I also used for the green leaves. And as last I stamped this number 11 with these stamps. And I will show you the other side of the page and so you can see how it hold up. I think the paper holded up the ink quite well. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I also want to thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe if you didn't do it yet. And I hope I will see you next time. Bye bye.